I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Peter Costco, Production Designer for Sarah Polly's searing drama, Women Talking. Peter, this film is contemplative, confronting, and it takes place primarily on this one massive, pivotal set that is extremely immersive, this barn where the women debate their future. It's a safe haven, it's immersive, it's incredibly detailed. So what are your main priorities in bringing this space to life because if this is wrong the whole film falls apart no pressure <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that was a bit of a pressure because also you just you know reading the script you realize how much of the film takes place there so you know it's got to be something that is um you know lends itself to filming uh and um has enough visual interest to you know sustain that length of um camera time but still has to feel and look like a barn. And uh, earlier on in the process, um, you know, it was doing some um, some SketchUp models that um, I was looking at with uh, Sarah and the DP, and um, you know, like uh, knowing what some of the requirements uh, would be. You know, like I had uh, an, er an earlier version that had a lot more windows, and um, you know, like the DP liked it. But you know, one thing that Sarah said was that. Uh, um, it would seem really odd if the barn that they ended up in just happened to be perfect for filming, you know, like that was just, you know, like had all these conveniences and stuff. And she, you know, like, and that kind of pulling back was something that happened throughout the design process. So, you know, we did something that was, um, had fewer windows, but the ones that were there were very crucial to certain scenes. And when they were open, because if you, you know, go back and look through the film, like there's a process of, you know, like um, getting a sense of the outside world coming into the barn as they open at strategic points, the various doors and windows. And so that was really crucial, but also, you know, like this is, there is an epic quality to the decisions that they're making and the issues that they're discussing and the 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 gravitas of their decision that you know we wanted the space to have a majesty to it as well so you know like by going with uh, the very you know archetype standard barn design with a gambrelled roof it allows you for huge ceiling height and a very open cathedral quality the one concession that um we did make in barn designs to allow for filming is that we built a barn with a very roomy hayloft and fewer posts than most barns would have so that the camera could be moved around the hayloft and there wouldn't be obstructions in the way and it wouldn't uh, interfere with lighting or the blocking of the women or any you know, uh, ca camera movements or anything like that. Uh, so that was um, you know, uh, the challenge in the constructed barn. And we were doing this simultaneously as we were scouting uh, barns on locations. And we found the great barn on a great farm and a super cooperative farmer who allowed us to uh, plant different crops than what he was planning, uh, lay out a section, a whole network of um, uh, dirt roads through the fields and plot various other structures in the fields and so um it was uh, quite a process uh basically planning out the colony like that uh but we also had to make significant structural changes to his barn where we were cutting through major support posts to allow us to put like the big hayloft door that uh that one of the girls uh jumps out of so um uh we were very fortunate um in finding somebody that would allow us to do all this stuff and we had the barn on location that we use for the exteriors uh, and the barn in the studio that we use for the interiors. And that allowed us to um, basically, you know, um, have this very large structure in a space where we could control the light. And because the whole um, ticking clock element of the story, you know, like the men are away and the women have a very finite length of time and a very brief length of time to come to decision with what they're going to do. Um, we ended up um, building a barn in the uh, in the studio where we could control all these things and um, to get that um, sense of the outside and the moving sun, the barn was draped in a, a big blue cloth curtain that, uh, you know, um, was able to uh, 
be used for like the CGI elements of uh, what you wow. see through the slats and the moving sun and all that sort of stuff. So it was a, uh, it was a, a fairly um, intricate process, but you know, really, uh, um, there's a, a lot of elements that went into it to uh, to make it believable and realistic without being you know too um, too convenient. And there was a bit of a you know like a, a fable like quality that. Uh, Sarah wanted to uh, to imbue in the material, and uh, you know, part of it was already there in how these women lived. I mean, you know, like we wanted it to be a little bit um, out of place and out of time. And yeah. the fact that the women, you know, live in this very kind of like archaic um, uh, uh, lifestyle with all these you know restrictions and limits to what they can do and what they can't do and what they could utilize and what they can't. Um, that all already seemed to kind of get us halfway there. And the fact that they didn't even know where in the world they were, they had a vague idea, you know, but as they're um, deciding to, you know, uh, leave the colony, like that whole kind of uh, uh, sense of uh, um, not knowing where they are became a big part of it. So like the story kind of lent itself to that. And, the, you know, what, when we were thinking of the barn, we thought that uh, it it was also um, very um, uh, appropriate for the discussion that they're having, uh, yeah. because being in a hayloft, they were kind of suspended on this platform halfway between, you know, metaphorically heaven and earth, you know, and they were in this kind of limbo state before they decided, you know, what to do with uh, the situation that they were faced with. Yeah, there's so much to unpack with what you're able to achieve here. Like I felt the gravitas of what they were doing lent itself to a barn that was cathedral or parliament-like. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the urgency of what they were trying to decide. I felt um, the barn then the, the barn walls closing in on them. Like I just felt like the way that this set was able to give us the audience that meta almost uh, feeling that we... I didn't quite recognise until later on when I started thinking about it. And DP Luc Montpellier, his beautiful camera angles and desaturated colour palette also worked beautifully with your work as well. But one question I have, and you kind of touched on it already, but just briefly, that this Mennonite aesthetic, and it could have been in Bolivia or Pennsylvania, I don't know, but it feels like a period drama, although because it's so austere and, and, and archaic, but yet it's a very contemporary film that was, that was set 10 years ago. So while staying true to the rustic, bucolic nature of the set, did you need to include any modern touches at all so to, to key us into the fact that it's not a period film? Well, that's a funny thing. I mean, the way they live kind of makes it feel like a period. Um, they live a period life in a sense. But, uh, you know, the uh, we did have um, refrigerators in the kitchens that because they, we did a lot of research into how Mennonite live and what is allowed and what isn't allowed. And, um, you know, we weren't really I mean, there's never any identification that this is a Mennonite community, but anybody yeah. that's Mennonite, as Marion Taves, the author whose book this is based on, grew up Mennonite. She said, anybody that is familiar with Mennonites will know right away this is a Mennonite community. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there was a certain, um, you know, we so we did a lot of research and um, uh, into how they lived and what was allowed. And in a sense, there was an interesting visual language that developed out of the um, restrictions that they put on their lives. I mean, everything from um, the colors that they use to uh, the materials uh, it, for their homes, to even some of the finishing details and you know, uh, exposed uh, roof trusses and the kind of trim around the doors and all this sort of stuff. And even the fact that you know, because it's a community where uh, simplicity is a virtue and plainness is a virtue and anything that gets a little bit too fancy and prideful is, is, uh, is um, they're very critical of. Um, it was interesting that in their houses, they didn't have anything on their walls that was decorative, but they were all, but if it was something, um, uh, uh, something functional, it was allowed. So yeah. um, in some of the reference photos, you could see that, uh, that there's a wall with maybe two or three calendars on it because the calendar has a useful purpose. 
it also happens to have a photographic image that's part of the calendar and gives some decoration to the wall. But there were other reference photos that had particularly beautiful face cloths on the wall next to the sink. And yeah, uh, functional. They, you know, yeah. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, that's fascinating. Yeah. And we, so within this kind of limited visual language of how they lived, we tried to then give each of the houses their own particular character. And um, um, uh, very early in prep, um, I did a little presentation yeah. for uh, the actors whose houses we were depicting. Okay. And we tried to, you know, um, show what we were emphasizing and what we wanted to achieve in the different houses so that they all felt like they were part of the same colony, but they each had their own distinctive um, personality and character. And yeah. so that was an interesting process and getting the feedback from the art, um, from the actors who had really interesting input as well. So fascinating. Um, well, I wish I could talk to you about this all day. We're going to bring you back shortly now for our group chat though. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Thank you.